sitting in this leather so long that my hide's getting raw. Hide, uh, <laughs> Pretty good, huh? <laughs> hey, how much further are we going to drive these critters? This is it. You mean we're going to make camp? Right here. Those are the sweetest words you've said in days. Hey, Larry! Come on up here. This is as far as we're going, Larry. The Medicine Pass is only ten miles down the canyon. I want to do a little investigating before I take the herd to that pass. But my contract with Crockett calls for delivery on the Montana side. And my job is to see that every pound of beef is delivered and paid for. Come on, we'll help the men get the herd settled down. Hey, Fuzzy, what makes Billy so suspicious? There's rustling going on in the past. Well, he's just naturally curious, and when he gets a curious streak, there's no stopping him. Come on, horse. Nice looking bunch of cattle. Yeah. Twice as big as the herd they drove in last year, Stanton. Which makes the job more interesting. Steve, you and Squint ride over to the hideout. Tell Charlie Green to have his men ready. I want a word with Ed Lowry. Okay, boss. around the last week or so, Stanton. I've been up to the county seat on the cattle deal that Shaw and I are going into. Glad to see you back. Glad to be back. business to attend to. Lay my hand. Just get back? Yep. Joe Springer at the county seat has arranged to handle all the beef we can ship. Good. Well, as soon as the Wyoming herd goes through the pass, we'll make a final cleanup. Then Crockett won't be able to fill his contracts. So we'll take over his factory plant and ship our own beef. Not going to be as simple as that, Shaw. There's a double cross in the making. What kind of a double cross? The Wyoming herd has arrived. Well, that's good, ain't it? I talked to Ed Lowry. He's not bringing the cattle through Medicine Pass without the orders of Billy Carson. Billy Carson? What's he got to do with it? According to Lowry, everything. Carson's got wind of something. Oh. Hey. Maybe we get a break at that. How do you figure? Young Jack Crockett's in there losing heavily. I can get his IOU for enough to take over that packing plant without any trouble. That doesn't fix Carson and the herd. I know a way to handle him, too. Just listen to the click of them chips and the whirl of that wheel. <laughs> Brother, that's music to my ears. Sim, this is my lucky day. <laughs> Plus, give me those trick pasteboards you got in your pocket. Come on now, Billy. Be reasonable. I don't want you going getting in any trouble. Come on, shell out, shell out. Once more. Come again. No? These are the ones. I wasn't going to use them. You know that. No, no, I don't know that. <laughs> Come on, please.
gambling today? No, no, not today, Margie. Thanks. Okay. Remember, Fudge, not a word about the Wyoming herd, no matter what you hear. All ears and tongue tied. That's good. Hey, is that young Crockett? Yeah, it looks like it. I'll have two cards. Hi, Carbon. Hello, Shaw. Hello, Jack. Fifty's all I got. We'll give you a break, son. Considering the last few rolls in the pot, I'm caught. Queens, three of them. Too bad, Crockett. I topped you with three kings. I'm through. Sit down, Jack. I'll take your R.O.U. The name of Crockett's as good as gold here. I'll try one more hand. Good. Now Jack, can I, uh, can I speak to you a minute? Is it important? Very. It can't wait. Deal me off this one. You just got in with a Wyoming herd. My father and I have been expecting you. Glad you got in. How do the cattle look? A1 shave. Losing? Oh, they got into me a little, but my luck will change. Can't force your luck, Jack. You know, I've just been itching to play a hand. Do you mind if I sit in your place? Why, no. No, I may not last very long. Then you can take over, okay? Sure, you mind if I sit in a minute or two? Jack's going to rest a while. Uh, I guess not. Sit down. You may have $200 worth of chips. That's me. That goes for me, too. Leastwise, where the chips are concerned. Ain't it the truth? You seem to be the only one that can make them stick to your fingers. I got openers. I'll see that raise ten. I'll see that ten and double it. Stops me. I'm staying. I'll raise that 25. I'll say that 25 and 50 more. The flesh is willing, but the spirit is weak. Well, from now on, it's between you and me. Yeah, it looks like a good time to get help from the deck. I'll just see your race, sure. Cards. Let me have two cards. I'll take one. Sure say so. I hope you enjoy my conversation. I bet you a hundred dollars. Well, I'm gonna let cash do my talking. Do I understand your calling? You do not. I've got 500 in greenbacks here. It says you're bluffing. I'll call in. What do you got? Aces and eight. I guess Shaw sure went ham and dealt you two aces. He forgot and dealt me three. Are you suggesting that I was dealing from a stacked deck? I'm suggesting nothing. There's five aces on the table. Why? Such guns are dangerous. This is the deck we started with. The ones on the floor from the stack deck the Tin Horn got when he picked up that card. I'm curious about the way you play with those bangles of yours, Shaw. Why, it's only a habit. Only a habit, eh? And I'm curious about you, too. Me? Yeah, you and your opening. They were kings, spades and diamonds. Jumping Judas if they ain't still paired. 
You'll have to take my word for it. It's good enough for me. But I think they dealt you that pair just to keep you in, to make this frame look convincing. Well, I reckon you're convinced, too, that this tin-horn gambler was playing a lone hand. I wouldn't say that. Your hand's called again, Shaw. It's his six-shooter that's calling for him. Everybody knows I never carry a gun. I tell you what I'll do. I'll ditch my gun if you'll take off that coat of yours. It's a deal. The deal's off. He's only trading his six-shooter for Squint's shotgun. Crockett's in cahoots with him. I'm only an interested bystander, and I'll expect all of you to follow my example. Are you satisfied? Yeah. Hey. have been hopping mad at each other. Well, yes and no, Sheriff. It was the wind-up of an argument about curiosity. Were his fancy fingers there in on the curiosity argument, too? Those fingers of his were the real cause of it. What's the matter, Hammond? Did you lose your gun? Well, I, I must have lost it in the shuffle. Well, never mind. You won't be needing it where you're going. Yeah? When I told you to stay out of Teton City, I wasn't talking just to hear myself talk. Sure, Sheriff, sure. Well, I'll give you one more chance to get out and stay out. Okay. Well, get going. And I'm giving you a last warning, Shaw. Any more roughhouse and I'll put a padlock on this place. All right. I'll keep it quiet, Sheriff. You'd better. As long as I'm Sheriff, this is going to be a law-abiding community. Hey, uh, where, where, where'd I collect? Collect what? Well, one ship, one dollar. Before this game was messed up, we was winners. What do you mean, we? Well, my curious friend and me. <laughs> The game wasn't even finished. It was broken up. That's right, sure. Broken up with five aces. And uh, you're a slick-fingered gambler. Under the circumstances, sure, I think it'd be best to pay off. All right, sure. Come on, you and your half fool. <laughs> I told you this was my lucky day. My dice never lie. I'll see you outside, please. Hey, Joe. Cash him in. Thanks, partner. Didn't the sheriff give you orders? Yeah, his orders keep me from working my trade hereabouts. But with you, everything's fine and dandy. I see you got your gun back. Yeah, there's nothing like a gun to help settle an argument. Well, any argument you have is with Carson, not me. Quite a nice sidekick with the whiskers is cashing in on every dollar chip I have. I'm cleaned out. I'll take my cut from the big safe in there. Well, you know I can't do that. That's the cattleman's bank. I can't just help myself to the customer's money. What about tapping the deposit that was made to pay for the Wyoming herd? Certainly you won't need all that money after they cross Medicine Pass. What do you know about the Wyoming herd? Enough to hang Stanton and you. This sounds like a shakedown. Call it what you like, but I want my cut. All right, you'll get it. But you have to give me time. Well, I happen to be in a hurry. The card's stacked against you, Hammond. I could blow you out like a light and say you held me up for getaway money. Yeah, but everybody knows you never carry a gun. I could say I had to rustle your gun to do it. Yeah, I could get away with murder. And if I don't hear you tell what you know about the Wyoming herd, I will. Everybody in there, including the sheriff, saw that my holster was empty. And nobody knows that I got the extra gun. I think you're lying. Yeah, but you ain't sure. This happens to be an honest sheriff, and if I'm rubbed out, things are going to look mighty funny to him. You said you could get it, but here's your chance to prove it, Shaw. I'm going out. You're the only man that ever saw me draw and walk away. 
Well, you'd better keep going because I'll kill you on sight. I said I was going out. And what I know about the Wyoming herd goes with me. That's right. I know a few things you'd like to hear. Go ahead, I'm listening. On account of the sheriff, we'll have to do our talking out of town. Okay. What's on your mind? A couple of things. But first, I want to know why you made a chump of me. Because you're a disgrace to your profession. You see, I ran in that extra ace from this deck here after I watched you deal from the bottom when you trimmed young Jack Crockett. It's against my principles to cheat, I... Uh... You didn't hesitate to palm off an ace on me and had me run out of town. That's right. Why, you... Six and an ace. Ha <laughs> old man, look. <clears throat> Seems to be our lucky day. <laughs> Where'd you get that gun? Eh, hey, Hammond. He'll probably be needing it, seeing he's been run out of Montana. <laughs> hey, uh, what'd you find out? Bugs, did you notice how anxious Shaw was to get Crockett's IOUs? Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, there's something much bigger going on than I suspected. Let's get the medicine passed. You cheated me, Hammond. I never saw a loser yet that didn't squawk. When the play's on the level, I'll take the bad with the good. What do you want? The money you stole from me. Go see Shaw. He's running the game. You'll go with me. That shot came from over there. I want Billy Carson. Hey, who did you murder and when? I don't seem to remember. Must have been walking around in my sleep, bud. Oh. Fox Cup. Unlucky day. In which case we separate here. Separate? Why? I want to find out what that murder's all about. Now, you're going back to camp and tell Larry not to move that herd until he hears from me. Well, where are you going? It ain't healthy for you to run around alone. I'm going to find out what that murder's all about. See you back at camp, bud. Oh, all Sorry. right. Wait a minute. Isn't that Carson? Why, well, it sure is. He's making for the Wyoming line.
and he's safe for a while. But I'm fixing things so I can tag him in Wyoming or kingdom come. What detained you? I had a little trouble. Came around the long way. How's everything out there? All right. We're ready to start with the past any time you give the word. Now, right now, Lowry, I'm suspicious of everybody. Dave Crockett's as straight as a string. I know that, but how about the rest of the packing company? Can you say as much for them? There ain't any except against son Jack. Say, that must be the fellow that gets keep falling. Listen, will you stop biting my glove? Where can old man Crockett be reached? At the Triangle Star in Montana. I think I better have a talk with him before I move those cows through the pass. Well, you're going to eat first, ain't you? <sighs> right now, Fuzz, I'm as hungry as you always are. Come on. Fuzz, I have some unfinished business with you. With me? Uh-huh. I once had certain stacks of chips that represented an investment. And oh, I, oh I, I, was, I was just coming around to that business. In uh, fact, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> of course, uh... You realize that uh, nobody know which tips were whose after you got careless and mixed them up, but I aim to be fair. Yep, you're the one and only Fuzzy Fair Play Jones. That's me, and to prove it to you, I'm going to split 50-50. To make this arithmetic more simplified, I'm, I'm going to start at the bottom with the $1 readers. Now, here's one for you and one for me. Two for you and one, two for me. Three for you. One, two, three for me. Hey, Fuss, you, you sure are good at arithmetic, aren't yeah, you? Good. <laughs> the highest marks in school. Now there's four for you. One, two, three, and four for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Five for you. One. Two, three, four, five for me. Six for you. One, two, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Fuzz. Hold up before you stop to short changes, huh? Well, I know you did the work, but I did all the worrying, so I'm entitled to a profit. Well, now, let's see here. This would, uh, would make about what, uh, young Jack Crockett lost in the poker game, you know? And, uh... And that's about what I lost. And this is what you get for your worrying. You didn't do much worrying, did I? No, not very much. Now, I'm going into town to have a talk with old man Crockett. <laughs> Goodbye, Fuzz. There ain't nobody nowhere just like Billy Carson. Maybe. But considering things, he shouldn't keep his dates alone. He always chooses to play solitaire when things are shaping to bust wide open. That's what I figured. And there ain't nobody dares interfere except me. I always wait till he gets going good to wherever he's going before I start trailing him.
right, mister. Why'd you take a shot at me? Why are you so interested in our stock? I, I beg your pardon, ma'am. I, I thought you were... Uh... Never mind what you thought. What are you doing trespassing on Triangle Star Land? Give me my rifle. I'm sorry, ma'am. You did that on purpose. I know I didn't. The rope got stuck around your ankle. My then. dad will fix you for this. All right, well, we let him handle it because I'm on my way to see him right now. Come on. Go away and leave me alone. Until the last six months, Stanton, I've always met my notes on time. You will admit that. Maybe I didn't make myself clear. What I'm worried about is security to cover the notes, not the payment. Well, the cattle I've got coming will more than do that. Providing there isn't another short count on this side of the pass. What do you want me to do? Well, so as to satisfy the bank examiners, supposing you give me something in writing that you'll surrender the packing plant and the Triangle Star if you can't meet your note. Well, the notes are not due until the first of the month. That's five days away. All right, Stanton. I'll be glad to do it. Come into my office. I think that's what you want. Look it over. What kept you? I was delayed, Dad, by a mistake. <laughs> yes, sir, sort of a mutual mistake. Mr. Carson was on his way to see you when we met, so we decided to come along together. Shake hands with my dad. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Mr. Carson's riding with the Wyoming herd. That's what he wants to talk to you about. Yes, we've had a long trip. We haven't lost a horn or a pound of beef. I'm expecting that the herd will come through the path the same way. What makes you think that they won't? Well, every cattle deal you've made lately have gone into the Wyoming end with a long count and come out the Montana side with a short one. Son, perhaps you're forgetting my name is Crockett. Well, that may be, sir, but the herds haven't tallied at both ends of the path. You see, Dad was laid up with injuries for almost a year. Charlie Green and my brother Jack were running the business. Then Green disappeared when Dad recovered. That's when I first found out what was going on. Green was crooked. I don't doubt your word, sir, but just so that history doesn't repeat itself, I'm asking you to take delivery on the Wyoming side. Well, that seems fair enough under the circumstances, Dad. Can I butt in? Dave, I couldn't help overhearing your conversation. This is Harry Stanton. He and Shaw do my banking. I know, Mr. Shaw. I've had dealings with him. You took a chance crossing back into Montana, Carson. You think so? Carson's wanted for murder. Figuring on collecting the reward, Mr. Stanton? That's the sheriff's business. It's mine to advise Mr. Crockett not to have any deal with you. Well, unless he does, the herd stays in Wyoming. Lowry will have something to say about that. The contract calls for delivery in Teton City, Montana. That's where the payoff will be. And I still say the herd stays where it is unless payment is made or I'm sure it's safe to take them through the pass. Goodbye, Dad.
wonderful to meet up with you, Billy. You sort of jumped to conclusions accusing me of killing someone, Sheriff. That gambler you left town with was found dead. Oh, so that's it. Well, I gave the fellow a good beating, but I didn't shoot him. You sure you didn't use a little Derringer? I never owned one. Why? Well, if you didn't rub out Hammond, then why did you try to get away from me? Well, that's easy. Save my own neck. I've been reading your advertising. Well, you shouldn't have come back across the state line. Stick out your wrists. Hold it, Sheriff. Now climb down. Keep your gun on him, Billy. Okay. As a parting thought, Sheriff, three men were cheated by that gambler. One of them might have carried a Derringer. Funny, I didn't think of that. But there's only two. Shaw never carries a gun. I beg your pardon. I stand corrected. There, cock it along your horse. I'll turn yours loose later. Come on, Fred. Now, back to Wyoming? No, we're going into Teton City. I want to see young Jack Crockett. But, but you can't go in now, there. Now, don't worry about it. We'll be in and out of town before the sheriff gets there for us. Come on. Like you're getting ready to close up shop? No, I'm just arranging while they can take over. I'm leaving town. Why? To clear you of the charge of killing Hammond. You got into a jam on my account when you slipped that fifth ace in the deal and turned Hammond up as a crook. Wait a minute. How'd you know that? I wasn't dealing. I heard you telling. Uh, you mean you uh, saw Hammond alive after me and Billy rode out? It was after that that I killed him. I was trying to get back the money I lost. Whose guns did you use, Jack? Hammond's. Hammond's, eh? And you couldn't have done it. Well, I must have, I tell I'll you. take I... it easy. I just had an argument with the sheriff. He claims that Hammond was killed by a bullet from a Derringer. So you couldn't have done it. A Derringer? That's a relief. Can you prove it? That's what I intend to do. Right now, I need your help to get the Wyoming herd through Medicine Pass. You see, we're responsible for him. Well, I'm as much concerned seeing they get through as you fellas. What do you want me to do? You think you can round up enough men to patrol the pass from one end to the other? You bet I can. I'll have them here within an hour. Just a minute, Jack. I got something for you. What's this? Money you lost at the poker game. See, Fuzzy collected the chips and Shaw paid off. Just like a slot machine. Thanks, Thanks. fellas. Now go up and round up those men and uh, we'll wait here for you, Jack. What's going on here? Getting together some men to patrol Medicine Pass. We're in for trouble. What's wrong? Here's the paper I got Crockett to sign, giving us the Triangle Star packing plant, if the Wyoming cattle don't arrive. And young Crockett's hiring men to make sure they do. We'll put a stop to that. Boys, Jack Crockett is hiring men down at his office. I want you two to bust it up. 
Do anything you have to do to keep them from going to work for him. What's it all about? We haven't time to waste. Do like I said and do it quick. Right. Men, it's very important to me that these cattle get through without any trouble. You all know there's been rustling in Medicine Pass. The work's liable to be dangerous. But we're willing to pay top wages. Now, what do you say? That's good to me. That sounds good to me. But how do we know we're going to be paid? I hear Crockett is short on ready cash. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We Crockett's always make good on what we say. Anybody that wants to can get a week's pay in advance. The law's after Carson, men. With him and the dealer, don't look good to me. Oh, well. Me neither. Anyhow, what good will the money do us? If we're killed by the rustlers. We're not sure there'll be any rustlers. We're only playing safe. Safe for Crockett, not the rest of us. Don't be fools and fall for that cheap talk and big promises. That's your opinion, mister. If you don't like it, you can get out. Suppose you try and put me out. I said, suppose you try and put me out. You can't get away with that. What do you say, boys? Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I knew I could depend on you men. We still have a chance to stop Crockett. You know where the Wyoming herd is camped? Yes. Right out to Medicine Pass. Charlie Green is there with his men. Tell him that I said to get his boys. Still waiting for that Wyoming herd. We're going to change our plans this time, Charlie. Young Crockett's putting out a patrol in the pass to see if nothing happened to the cattle. What do we do? Let them through? No, you stampede them before they get started. They're bedded down just across the Montana line. Scatter them throughout the two states. How about grabbing some of them as usual? No, just get them on the run and keep them going. Right. Get your horses, boys. We're right. as I go. You start through the pass with the herd at daylight tomorrow. I don't see how anything can happen the way we got the pass covered. I don't either. Snake eyes. Wow, that, that, that's bad. Look. <laughs> <laughs> hey, these guys don't lie. Mm -hmm. Honestly, they don't. Not much they don't. We'll be seeing you, Jack. Come on, please. Get up there and do it. This is mine. Right. This is Gilliam. Let's go. Come on. We move in the morning, Larry. You hear that, boys? Yeah. Captain, uh -huh. the herd. All right, get mounted, men.
Who hired you to stampede those cattle? Yeah, talk and talk fast. You're both wasting your breath. Now, you won't have any to wait when we get through with you. Let's take care of them now. It comes later. Get his horse. We're heading back to... Come on. All right, come on, get up. Get anything out of him? Not a word. You're a lucky Carson's taking you away before the men get back to shoot you on sight. Billy, I guess you know you're a fool to be doing this. You're still wanted for murder. Am I? Well, as long as I stay on this side of the state line, I'll be all right. Get up there, Gus. We'd want to let him get out of sight. Get out of sight? Why, he's leaving a trail as plain as the whiskers on your chin. <laughs> Look at that, Spud. Put a small hole in his saddlebag and fill it with salt. Put from here, Fudge. And I beat it back here just as fast as my horse would bring me. You don't know who done the shooting? No, why? I'm the only man come back here. The rest of them went into town yeah. after stampede. Yeah? Hey, what's this? Pick him up. Behind those rocks, bud. Come on, man, move out. Well, this is it. Yeah, pretty smart hideout. Yeah. Well, I'll be plenty glad to get a hold of you two. I'll send the patrol in the pass to help with the herd, Fuzz. Pick you up later. I'm going to tell Crockett what happened. Come on. Keep Green and that other fellow undercover. Don't tell anybody about him. I have an idea that we can scare him into telling us what we want to know. I think you're right. When do you think you'll reach Rocky Creek with the herd? About noon. Well, we'll ride out and meet you after I tell Stanton that I've got plenty of security to cover my notes. All right, Mr. Curtis. Only be a minute. Hello, Stanton. Mm. Hello, Crockett. Hello, Crockett. Got some good news for you. You have? Carson recovered the cattle that were rustled in Medicine Pass. Well, that is good news. I'll say it is. I was afraid that the Triangle Star was a goner. Uh, is the cattle being driven over your place? Yes. I just thought I'd drop in and let you know. Well, thanks. Yeah, thank you. See you later. 
Well, we've let the triangle star slip right through our fingers. No, we haven't. There's only one water hole between Hidden Valley and Crockett's Ranch. And I'm going to make certain that when that herd drinks, it'll get no further. Come on. that down there? One of them looks like Stanton. Oh, I wonder what they're putting in the water. Those cattle won't last 15 minutes after they drink this water. Get to Billy Carson. Tell him that the water's been poisoned. But Dad, Do I... as I tell you. I'll hold them off. <laughs> you take care of Crockett. I'll get the girl. Keep quiet, nothing will happen to you. My father and brother will kill you for this. It's time for us to clear out of Montana. You take the girl across the state line and keep her until I meet you. Where are you going? Into town to clear up things. Get those cattle watered down right away. I could use some of that water myself. Me too. Now let's go get it. Gun tastes good. <laughs> okay, Fuzz, you first. Stanton, poison the water. Poison the water. Back, the water's poison. What if I stand up, Crockett, where's Barbara? She rode to warn you. That's funny. We passed that out in the range. He was heading towards town alone. Yeah. Well, maybe the other fellow caught up with her. Was he? Take him back to camp, then get half the men and scour the range between here and the state line. I'm going into town after Stanton. Go on.
Seems like we both had the same idea, Stanton. No, uh, something unexpected came up, and I was going to fix the whole... You were going to run out and leave me holding the bag. Why, sure, I've always played fair with... <laughs> at each other? I caught him robbing the safe, and he killed Stanton. Now, wait a minute. That ain't the way I heard it. Here's the Derringer you were looking for, Sheriff. Would you like to see a slug from it? It would help. Sure fired this at me a little while ago. Those two bullets came from the same gun. Come on, Shaw. Good work, Fred. 